I've been trying to wire this thing, center console thing, for probably like a month and a half. And every time I sit down to try to work on this, I'll show you what happens. Today was no exception. As soon as I sat down, uh, Comcast showed up to try and actually put some real internet in this place. So here is a sloppy mechanics multi-position switch. Fuck is you piece of shit. And then uh, over here, god damn it, Holly Dash obviously. And then we have a dual like USB thing, one's for the ECU, one's for the dash. And then we have three buttons. One's gonna be for the air conditioning. I don't even know what the other two are gonna be for yet. Just kind of wiring them in case I need them. This is the cable for the dash. It's a female USB. So then we use this double dong USB for that. The one from the ECU plug right in. So I'm gonna have cables dangling all over the car. So hopefully I can get this thing into the car today, that'd be nice. Here's where it goes in the car. This center console thing was like extra stupid. It had like a tape, tape holder for like, you know, the 1980s tapes, tape deck. Does this thing even take tapes? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, one of these guys. <clears throat> and then some like EQ thing that I don't even think worked. And I kind of want all this factory crap up here to work. It just, I don't know, looks more right for this car. And then especially with like the 686 dash, it's too small and then the opening for the steering wheel isn't big enough. So you always just like, you're breaking your neck to try and look through here as the steering wheel's in the way. And let's not kid ourselves, nobody actually looks at these dashes anyway. So I spend an insane amount of time right here in this chair on this computer, Zoom calls, making videos, all sorts of stuff. And I noticed that something started smelling bad, kind of weird. And uh, probably 10 years ago, I had a bird that I guess flew under the wall and smashed his brains out and then fell like behind my toolbox and just laid there all dead. And kind of the same thing happened and maybe even like a kind of similar smell where like one day you're like something stinks, maybe I need to take out the trash and then it just gets worse and worse. And then a few days later, you're like, okay, we need to investigate. So that went on here for, I don't know how long it was. It felt like an eternity, but it's probably only a couple of days. I took the trash out like 20 times and even like cleaned out the trash can and hosed it out and then started investigating. I swept the floor. It was this like musty, just kind of smell and just kept cleaning everything. And then I got to the point where I started pulling everything out, all the tables out and sweeping again and again. And I just could not get this smell to go away. Looks like I cut all of these cables like a hundred feet too long. So that's good. Just shorten all that. So anyways, the smell like kept getting worse. And don't worry, this is actually car related too. And it got to the point where people would come here for you know their two new appointments or whatever, and I'd have to start explaining myself. I promise I didn't take a dump on the floor, but something stinks, so just ignore it. And it was clearly like in that area. Uh, you know, you couldn't smell it over at the dyno, you couldn't smell it over on this side of the shop. So I was like literally searching for this god awful stench like looking in these intake ports and looking in the cylinders of these motors and I couldn't find it anywhere. I ripped the entire place apart. It was so frustrating, such a giant waste of time. I actually ended up having to like move some stuff around for making another video and the smell went away and I was kind of blown away when I figured out what it was. Before I moved all that stuff around, like the last person that was here told me that uh, it smelled like there was a skunk in the shop. And that's how like violently terrible it was. And then the next morning, it smelled like a skunk. And then it also smelled like just vomit. It was the worst smell. It would literally make you gag and it was unbearable. So here's a trash can. And right here 
is where the smell was coming from, but I swear it smelled like it was more like over here. So it turns out that this god awful smell was, I had uh, I think like five or six five gallon jugs of Renegade brand E85, the red stuff. And they were in brand new, like never used before sealed, like the race fuel jugs. And they were sitting right next to the trash can. So like I went over and kind of like smelled around them, but it didn't, usually like fuel will kind of have that, I don't know, I want to call it like chemically kind of like smell, but uh, it didn't have that at all. It literally smelled like skunks and vomit. So uh, once I figured that out and realized that I'm probably going to die from everything that I was smelling, now I'm like super interested to know, is it like the fuel itself that smells like skunk and vomit and like those fumes are poisoning my lungs and brain or is the fuel doing something to like the fuel jug or container itself and then that plastic is what's causing that god awful smell so it probably sounds like I'm over exaggerating a little bit but it was like legit embarrassing when somebody would walk in here and it would just smell that bad. I figure people probably think I don't take showers, shit in my pants everywhere I go. And uh, yeah, so that was, that was pretty miserable. So got rid of those fuel jugs and now everything's back to normal. So that's good. So if it actually was the fuel and not just the container, then I don't think I ever want to use that fuel ever again. Oh, that's several hours old and cold. That's disgusting. So these DT, DTM, DTP, all the different size, like these, these things. I love these things. And then uh, you can get these $700,000 crimpers if you want, or now. So back when I got these, like they didn't have a bunch of cheap options. Uh, but now you can get them for what, like 20, 30 bucks or something. So there's reason, no reason not to use nice connectors. But the ratcheting ones are way nicer. And that thing. You probably dangle yourself from the ceiling off of that connector or off of that pin. It's not going anywhere. So this one, I get a ring terminal. this like adhesive lined heat shrink on any of those style connections and I just made up a whole bunch of labels that I just conveniently threw in the trash so I'm an idiot but like the ring terminals I like these crimpers a lot they're ratcheting so they're way more expensive than they need to be but all the ratcheting ones are super nice so now the set needs to go into a connector, this is on a connector, this is a connector. So everything's terminated, I just gotta pretty it up. And it looks like everything's still like 700 miles long. That's kind of intentional. So like once you put the console thing like in the car, all the wiring has to like fish through this like metal thing and you can't get your hands back behind it. So what you gotta be able to do is like pull the whole console like out set it off to the side and then like have enough slack in the wires to where you can unplug everything. Like I said, everything is on connectors. So that way, like when it comes time to actually program this thing, I can just take the whole thing out of the car. Uh, that way I don't need to sit in the car using a mouse, sweating to death like an asshole since for whatever reason we don't have like laptop based software to program these things, which is why I think <laughs> you sit in a hundred cars that have highly hot pro dashes either 99 or 100 of them are just using like the absolute like most basic default layout like nobody ever even changes anything it's kind of weird so hopefully we can do something uh that pro dash over there is already like set up so in theory i can just like unplug this once i get this out of the car unplug it here plug it into that harness and then what am i talking about i don't even have an ac in here i'm sweating to death right now it doesn't really make any difference if i'm sweating to death in the car I'll shut up. I swear every minute I've spent working on this car has been a gigantic reminder of why I don't work on other people's cars anymore. It's like, hey, 
wired up three buttons for you. It took two months and took 9,000 hours, even though it probably should have taken 45 minutes. So now you owe me $4 billion and then everyone just wants to fight you. So kind of securing all of the wires and crap uh, back up to the like console thing itself, just that way nothing gets pulled on and comes unplugged and pisses me off. I guess I'll plug that GPS thing in that I'll probably never use. At least if I plug it in, I'll have to take everything back apart. So if we're putting the internet in, Comcast said that the where they have to connect to is like halfway down the road. And now they have to send out a whole like construction crew so that they can run the cable under the ground or under the road. I don't know what he was talking about. I wasn't really paying attention. But so now instead of that being done today, it looks like that's probably going to take a month. So you would think in 2023 that getting internet in a commercial building would not be that difficult, especially when you're right in the middle of town and like the actual Comcast building is a half a mile up the road. That's how things tend to go for me, so that's good. All right, I think this is ready to go into the car. It's so miserable in here. I'm literally sitting in a chair, like just drenched in sweat. Still beats being cold though. I hate winter. It's all secure. Nothing will get pulled on. You can call this organized chaos or a huge piece of shit. Your choice. If I was smart, I would have tested this before I put it in the car. But I'm not smart. Do you look at that? It's like Motec and Jesus handcrafted a center console for the car. Does anybody even know how to use this thing? This part is so much better than just a random cable dingle dangling all around. That works, that's good. Button one works. Button two works. Button three works. And I haven't wired up the this jout yet. Got an email. Apparently, we're supposed to have the worst storm since 2013 with a bunch of hail and tornadoes. So that's good. Guess I'll head home. So if my house blows away, I can just blow away with it. So I'm gonna leave.